Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So I've done this video in three, three takes. Hopefully this is the last and final one. So first things first. Um, someone had made a comment that um, he wasted his money coming to watch my video because I didn't give him enough information. He was just lazy. He didn't go back and look at the prior videos that introduced the product. But for his personal edification, I'm going to introduce the products and I'll tell you what I've done. So here I have my Wiko 48 volt LIF PO4 battery, 4.4 kilowatt hours. Okay, it's currently on and it's connected to my Lux PowerTech uh, 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. Um, this inverter can take up to 8 kilowatts. So on one string here, I can put 4 kilowatts. On the second string, I could put another 4 kilowatts. Um, it's currently on. So I've turned it on. Um, you can see the display. But all the stuff we have here, we'll look at on the screen. So the beautiful thing about this inverter is you can program it remotely. If you recall the last time, I, the last video I did part one, I struggled to connect the Wi-Fi. Uh, the mistake I was making was one, this, um, this Wi-Fi dongle or this Wi-Fi module has, it broadcasts. And if you want to access, to change or connect it to the internet, you need to connect using the uh, SSID that it broadcasts. So eventually I figured that out, I used the SSID, and it, it's a little tedious, it's not as straight and plain as they make it out to be, but I used the SSID once I accessed the system using the SSID. The SSID is also the serial number, that's what it broadcast. I was able to go in, and then following the instructions they gave, let me see if I could show you the instructions that they gave, Following the instructions that they gave, sorry, it's a PDF file. Oh, come on. Okay, let's do this. Mm, okay, here we go. So, it showed me um, the data. Is I followed the instructions they gave. I had already added the data log before the first time around. And now, um, what I did was I um, followed the instructions they gave. And following the instructions here, I was able to log on. So it says, um, go in, you scan. I didn't do that. I entered the information I found on the log spot invert itself, which is not the information I needed. I scanned. I saw my Wi-Fi network. And then I um, selected it and entered our password, saved it. It rebooted. It rebooted. Okay, and once it rebooted, it saw the device. Now, once I could see the device, the next thing I did was to log on, was to log into the app. And the app, on the app, it shows you many different things. So right now, select plan first, AWPS office is ours, and that's the serial number of the inverter. I don't have any solar connected. I don't have any, what do you call it? I don't have any, I don't have any loads, as you can see. There is nothing in, there is nothing out. I don't even have these areas connected. So I, I told the inverter that none of these items were connected. And then um, it's showing you the battery voltage. Now, initially when I had done the first video, I couldn't see that. The reason I couldn't see it was because I had not turned the inverter on. So once I turned the inverter on, it shows me the voltage of the battery, which was 52.5. It shows me the type of inverter. There is nothing coming in from the grid. There is nothing going out. Um, as you can see, the graphs are all zero because we're not doing anything right now. So that's the monitor function, the monitor side. You click on data. There shouldn't be any data because we've not accumulated any data over the... We've not accumulated any data over, over time. The inverter hasn't really run. So all you're going to see is a flat, cur a flat curve. Um, state of charge has remained pretty flat. It's showing 80... I don't remember what it showed at the beginning. I think it was showing 81%. Let me go back and see. And that state of charge is not accurate because there's no, it's not communicating with, oops, that number just went away. Bear with me. Um, okay, that number was there a second ago. That number is gone. And it's possible that I've lost connection with the device. But earlier it was showing me 81%. And now it's not showing me anything. Okay, WPS office. Um, yeah, it's still trying to connect to me. So it's not shown. Once it shows, you're now showing the serial number. Okay, now it's connected. 
and you're seeing 81 percent and 52.5 volts so that's what i had before data that number should be pretty flat um uh, when i connect the pv i should be able to show you much more information than what i'm showing you right now um configuration now the configuration is going to show what i have set up um bear with me real quick this their server is a little slow I was thinking it was my internet, but their server is a little slow because I think they say it takes 10 minutes from when I send data for me to check the data I sent. So there should there might be a little bit of a lag. So I called my plant AWPS office. That's that inverter is called AWPS office. The end, end user is me, Dr. Sola. Um, I have 3,600 watts in PV. The country I'm in is Nigeria. GMT plus one is what time zone we find ourselves in. And the day I created this was on the 9th of April. Then it gives you a quick overview. And there is a, there is a warning. If you click on it, it will tell you what it is. And what it is, is, hold on, bear with me. Okay, it's going to make me a liar today. But normally when I click on it, it shows me what that warning is. And that warning was um, telling me that I had a... I had a, what was it called again? Um, the BMS did not connect. It did not connect. The, there was a battery connection error. Yes, that's what it was. Let me see if I click it here if it shows it to me. Okay, I'm sorry I'm not able to show it to you. But I've been able to access that error message once before. And now, okay, we'll access it from this screen. Sorry, let's try and access it from this screen. So we're here. So here we go. Notice. Click and... Ta -da. I'm playing with it. I'm learning it as I'm teaching it to you. So their, their server is a little slow. I don't think I thought it was my internet, but it's not my internet. I've been able to go on a YouTube page and see something going on on YouTube. So here we go. Communication failure with battery. This was before I changed it from the factory default, which is a lithium ion, to the what do you call it? To a lead acid. And the reason I selected lead acid was because um, my battery right now cannot communicate with the inverter. And this battery can operate in what we call an open loop. Once um, they finish doing the test and they get the protocol, I'll connect the, connect, I'll connect the CAN connection, I'll connect the inverter to the battery, and then they can communicate with one another. And it shows you all the all the messages they had. So I guess this was when they were testing it in the factory. Um, you notice the event all occurred about the same time, uh, 3 06, uh, March 6th, and 10 20, 10 21, all the way to 10 34. And then at 1 o'clock, it said no AC connection. And then at 14 51, so this was 12 51, they start, start time 12 51. And then 1 o'clock, no AC connection. And then another, the same error started again. Um, I guess they switched off before you could recover. And then here my error showed um, communication failure with battery because it was showing lithium ion battery. Um, 1705, and by 1735, that error had corrected itself. So this is where you program um, the inverter, where you change the settings, where you change the parameters. Um, once this loads, it's going to show you your plant. And then it's going to show you the serial number of the plant, which is they call the inverter plants. I guess it's a solar, it's a solar plant. So it's showing that. And then you click on read. And then it's going to try and read the inverter in real time. And then it'll show you what settings are on. So for example, right now, this is the time. We're using COM port 1. Start voltage of 100. I could change that to 0 because there's nothing. Input PV input, no PV panels. It's on normal mode. My battery type is lead acid, and I selected 150 amp hours. And then here, as you could see, um, power backup is enabled, PV off grid is enabled, feed in is disabled, fast zero, you know, all these parameters. I can go through them, but I don't think you guys really want to go through. Um, want me to read all this stuff to you, but all the settings I could do could be doing right here. So microgrid, I can enable microgrid. Neutral detect will disable because we're not doing we're not doing that. Battery shared, we're not sharing battery, so we're disabling that. So I can go in and change all the settings. And then I come here and I come to the grid settings. I can change the grid connect voltage. So let me see if I can change this to you. High voltage. So we'll make this 250, but we're not connected to the grid here. So this number doesn't really matter. Click on set and then you wait. 
and then it says set successfully so it's changed on the inverter click ok um, connect time I think that's 30 seconds that's how long it should take to connect reconnect time 30 seconds so it comes in it, st it takes 30 seconds before it hands over from the battery to the grid okay frequency I can change this I can make this 50 instead of 50.2 um, this is high connect frequency uh, grid frequency low frequency so it, between 47 and half and 50.2 is what we set it to be read on power so all the settings I can change I can change all the settings for example I can change the grid limit voltage what the minimum is I can say what the maximum is I can say what the minimum frequency all these things I can set here once I set it it pushes it into the inverter so I don't need to be pushing all these buttons here to change the settings I don't need to do that okay I do that on laptop in real time and it sends it right to the inverter it's really exciting I could do my charge settings AC charge I don't have an AC charger but I could I could enable it and then I could set the times I want charged and the times I want charged to end and it allows me multiple I could do three different priorities depending on what I want sorry about that and then um, charge vote charge voltage setting for let us so I can change this here when I change it this should apply to I think solar but I'll very since I have no PV I'm not hundred percent sure um, charge rate setting so this is the maximum current I can change that um, char lead acid temperature high so I guess it's 40 degrees C um, all these numbers I can change so this I'll change because I think I can charge this battery to 50 Seven, this battery, I think I charge 57 or 58 volts. I'll make that setting change right here. Okay, this charge setting, um, 100%, we're not going to do 100%, we'll change it to 90%. So that we'll, we'll set what the 100% rate is, we'll change it to 90%. Let me change that right now. 90%, set. So we're not going to discharge it fully. And that setting has been accepted. Um, what else? I think there should be a low. A minute. Oh, what the minute? Okay, so here we go. Charge discharge cutoff voltage. We can set that to. Let's change that to forty-five. I believe. Forty-five set. So we set. We've changed the discharge voltage to forty-five. I believe I can go as low as forty-four on that. And I, I I'll change that again. Okay, I'll change that again. Discharge. How much current I could pull out? And then temperature discharge cut off cut off cut off battery level 10 percent and it cuts off so all the stuff i'm changing right here and it's going onto the inverter so i'm pretty psyched i finally i could access it it took me a little bit of time but once i get i got it done everything was done so here remote update i don't even need to be in this room i'm connected to the internet because this is connected to the internet and as long as it's connected to the internet i could do all these changes so i'm doing this in real time for the first time so you're seeing it as I see it so now is I, I could do a firmware update if I have new firmware I could upload BMS files so once we get the once we get the Wico on, online with them I'll only I'll update the BMS file as you see here upload BMS file I can do that so online device firmware file I can choose to update the firmware to a more recent version of firmware so it's pretty exciting everything I could do as long as it's connected to the internet I could push it through remotely so sorry this is one of the longer videos I've done I usually like to make my videos under 8 minutes but this one is going to 14 minutes so um, if you have any questions please feel free to post them below if you like what you see please give me a thumbs up if you're here to subscribe please click the subscribe button I'm pretty excited once my crew comes back in here We'll be putting this on the wall and we'll be running this. We'll be running this. I'm so, so, so excited. Thank you for watching. This is Dr. Sola once again coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria.